Happy Little Games. The influence of Bruce Lee in modern cinema cannot be understated. He overcame racial boundaries and became an icon not only in his home country of China, but all over the world. He was teaching us to be like water and kicking the crap out of Robin on TV all at the same time. His DNA is felt in everything from movies to TV shows and the area that we are the most interested in, which is video games. He has been often imitated but never duplicated in games such as Street Fighter, Super Punch-Out, World Heroes, and Tekken. If we are speaking of strictly licensed Bruce Lee games, one of the first and best was Bruce Lee for the home computer line. We also were treated to the fantastic ultimate one-on-one -on -one fighting game that has yet to be surpassed in any medium, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Today, we are going to take a look at one of the earliest arcade one-on-one -on -one fighting games that just so happens to feature a Bruce Lee knockoff by the name of Yi R Kung Fu. What famous professional wrestler appears in this game? What arcade game was marketed as the sequel to this game? What classic shooter did this game appear in? So let's go back to the mid-1980s when everybody was kung fu fighting. This is the history of Yi R Kung Fu. In 1984, Konami were well on their way to arcade greatness with a series of excellent arcade titles. Among their plethora of hits included Frogger. Time Pilot. and Hypersports. That same year, Data East released the first one-on-one -on -one martial arts fighter which was Karate Champ and it was a bona fide success. Konami got a whiff of all that moolah and wanted a little piece for themselves. They knew they couldn't outright copy the concept, so they had to come up with something just a little bit different, which saw the use of Kung Fu instead of Karate. The controls would also be different by adding two attack buttons instead of using two joysticks like in Karate Champ. Konami, like a lot of Japanese developers at the time, would have no problem using other people's ideas when it came to their box art. Just take a look at Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania, and of course, Contra. The game makes no bones about it. The main character is Bruce Lee, which was even more evident as the series went along. Another change for the better would be all the various characters you have to face as you made your way through the game. Yi R Kung Fu was released in the arcades in 1985 by Konami. As the story goes, your character goes by the name of Oolong, who is attempting to become the Grand Master of Kung Fu in honor of his father, who was killed in the final battle for his mastership. After a long apprenticeship of Kung Fu, you must face 11 deadly opponents who are also skilled in the art of Kung Fu in order to become the Grand Master. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighter in which you have to face the various foes using your impressive kung fu skills. Rather than fight characters with the exact same moveset as found in Karate Champ, each of the characters you face have different attacks and weapons such as swords, ninja stars, chains, and sticks. You only have two buttons at your disposal, a punch button and a kick button, but it doesn't matter because you still have 16 different maneuvers you can pull off. You accomplish this by holding a punch button and moving the joystick in 8 different directions and also holding the kick button and holding that in 8 different directions as well. The actual arcade game had a list of the maneuvers showing you exactly how to pull them off listed on the arcade control panel. 
you also have the ability to jump around like someone who took too much PCP. Speaking of the jump, this is accomplished by pushing up on the joystick which works fine, but Konami had plans to add a third button for the jump. This was evident by the actual PCB and is also an option in MAME to turn on this feature. You will need all the PCP you can get because that is pretty much your only means of defense since there isn't a traditional block function. You have to be fast because when you hit your opponent they are stunned for a brief second which leaves them open for another quick attack. A traditional KO bar was also added at the top of the screen and as you can see this was pretty much the template for all future fighting games. Since this is still 1985, there is no character select screen so you can only play as Oolong. It makes sense though because the story does revolve around you and your journey to become the Grand Master. Your opponents are grouped into two tiers with the first one featuring five fighters entitled Hot Fighting History and the second one being Master Hand History which includes six more difficult enemies. There are only two backgrounds in the game with the first one seeing you fighting in front of a waterfall and the second one in front of a Buddhist temple. Each character that you face does have a weakness and once you figure it out it's not too terribly difficult. However, you are awarded extra lives throughout the game. The ferocious kung fu masters that you face are Buchu, who is based on professional wrestler Abdullah the Butcher right down to his pointy shoes, the scar on his forehead, and his triple D bosom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nunja. After this, you face the final master by the name of Blues which sounds an awful lot like Bruce. He is a mirror image of your character except he doesn't have a shirt on although he is a bit faster. After you defeat Blues, there is no ending sequence and the game starts over at a slightly increased difficulty. The game controls fantastic especially for an early fighting game. The music and sound effects are really good and are quite catchy. It was converted to a number of systems which I will cover at the end of the video. The arcade game was a huge success and Konami wasted no time releasing a follow up entitled Yi R Kung Fu 2 The Emperor Yi Ga for various home computers and the Famicom. The game and characters have changed a lot from the graphic style to the names that are used. The sprites are much larger and are animated fairly well. Your character is known as Li Young who is the son of Oolong and has made it his mission to rid China of the Chop Suey Gang and in particular Emperor Yi Ga. Since most versions only used one button aside from the Famicom port, the controls were simplified just a bit with your character only having two different punches and four kicks. 
Before fighting any bosses, you have to proceed to the left as flying midget kung fu masters fly towards you. You have to dispatch them with your kicks and punches before you are able to proceed. The kung fu masters you face this time are Yen Pai, Lan Fang, Po Chin, who actually rips mighty farts as his special attack. Wen Hu. Wai Chin. Mai Ling. Han Chin And the final opponent is Li Jin who looks an awful lot like Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. With this game you do get a proper ending with you being thanked for your bravery and awarded a giant vase. This game added a two player mode although the first player can only play as Lee with the second player able to play as three of the enemy characters Yen Pai, Po Chin and for the first time in video game history a selectable female character by the name of Lan Fang. To aid you in your quest a bowl of low main might appear randomly which will give you invincibility for a short time. While all these extras are pretty enticing, the hit detection is a bit off making it just a little frustrating when trying to play. Regardless, the game sold like gangbusters and was converted to a number of systems with the best in my opinion being the Commodore 64 version and in particular the fantastic music. Also released in 1985 was something that people have speculated about for quite some time. Shaolin's Road or Kicker as it was known in North America is a beat em up from Konami that sees you take control of Lee as you jump from platform to platform with the greatest of ease using your martial arts skills to take out the never ending supply of baddies. The goal of each level is to defeat a certain number of enemies as indicated by the on screen meter. You do have two buttons to dish out the punishment with one being a jump button and the other a kick button. Various enemies will drop balls which will give you certain power ups. It's a fun little game but what does this have to do with Yi Ar Kung Fu? When this was released back in the day it was touted as being the follow up to Yi Ar Kung Fu. It makes sense as the character looks exactly like Oolong right down to his blue pants and his white shirt. In 1993, Konami finally released another fighting game by the name of Martial Champion. This is a one on one fighting game which sees you attempt to defeat the various 10 martial arts champions from all over the world. There has been a lot of speculation that this game was initially going to be called Yi Ar Kung Fu 2 and its main hero does resemble Oolong. This was released in the wake of the Street Fighter 2 phenomenon but it's not exactly a clone. You do have three buttons which are for upper, middle and lower attacks. Some characters you face do have weapons which can be knocked out of their hands and picked up to be used against them. Parodius has long been one of my favorite shooters and 1996's sexy Parodius was no different. This is a parody of the popular shooter Gradius and in some circles it's known as a cute em up. 
The series is fantastic fun, so if you've never checked it out, you should. The third level in particular pays tribute to Yi Yar Kung Fu, and you can actually see Oolong in the background just before you fight the boss, who looks like a giant version of Star from Yi Yar Kung Fu. Oolong makes an appearance in new international track and field for the Nintendo DS as a playable character. For some strange reason though, he is depicted as an ancient martial artist who declares himself roughly 1000 years old. It was included in the Konami Collector Series Arcade Advance for the Game Boy Advance. Out of all the home ports released, this one would have to be the best and most complete. It features two hidden characters that cannot be found anywhere else. The two fighters are Bishu, whose primary weapons are daggers, and Clayman, who is a living statue with a humongous sword. It also features a versus mode in which you can select up to 14 different fighters. In 2004, the Konami Collector Series Arcade Advance Plug and Play TV game was released. This is obviously a plug and play joystick that hooks directly into your TV and has six games in total, including Yi Yar Kung Fu. It was released on the Xbox Live Arcade in 2007. It features completely redrawn backgrounds with high resolution sprites and remixed music. If HD is not the way you swing, you can always switch back to the original arcade version instead. It was included with the Konami Classic Series arcade hits for the Nintendo DS. A mobile version was also released for Android and iOS. The game was released on the PlayStation Network as part of the Arcade Archive series. The game was converted to a number of computers and video game systems, and the first one we are taking a look at is the Famicom version. I think you can see why it was never released here in the States. The game looks nothing like the arcade game, instead opting to show chunky like a monkey sprites and pastel colors. The main character also had a name change and he now goes by Lee. There are only five bosses to fight as well. When it comes to the controls, one thing this version has over other ones that are on the list is that we get to use two buttons instead of one. This doesn't matter though because the controls are pretty much unresponsive. It also doesn't play like the arcade original either. The hit detection is very random making for a very frustrating gameplay experience. The MSX version, which the Famicom version is based on, is very similar, although the animation is more choppy. At the time, reviews were positive for this game, so if someone knows exactly what type of drugs they were doing, please let me know. Otherwise, what you see is what you get, which is a big steaming turd. Now on to a system that I don't discuss very often, which is the Commodore 16 or Plus 4. Yar Kung Fu looks decent in still shots, but there is a lot of clipping and the gameplay is slow. The hit detection is outrageously bad, but aside from a few short queefy blasts, there wasn't any sound to speak of.
the good old Commodore 64 version is up next and this was a favorite of mine growing up. The graphics look very similar to the arcade, ditching the bloated sprites from the Famicom version. You do only have one fire button, but once you get the hang of it, it plays pretty well. The game is fast and the animation is fairly smooth. The music is awesome, making great use of the SID chip. The character of Fetal is missing due to hardware constraints. The other problem comes with the AI, which does tend to be a bit cheap. All in all though, it's a good conversion for the 8-bit bread bin. The Spectrum version is up next and it comes in two distinct flavors. The 48K version features lower quality audio and graphics that are not quite as detailed. The gameplay is also a bit slower here as well. The 128K version is much better although there is still a lot of color clash going on. The music has been pumped up ever so slightly and it includes all of the bosses. The gameplay speed is also just a little bit faster, making it much more enjoyable to play. The Amstrad version looks really good with bright, vivid colors and large sprites. We get pretty good music and decent speed as long as you don't bother to jump. I wasn't aware this game took place on the moon. With that being said, the controls are absolutely horrible with you sometimes having to press the same maneuver three times on the joystick before it responds. Another system that isn't covered a whole lot around here is the BBC Micro and they also received a port of Yi Yar Kung Fu. Despite the noticeable palette change, this conversion is pretty good. The speed is fairly close to the arcade original and the animation isn't too bad, although there is a bit of clipping at times. It does control well, but it's just unfortunate that it doesn't have any music. The Acorn Electron also received a version. This looks to be based off the BBC Micro and it plays very similar. The Atari 8-bit line of computers also received a conversion that looks to be ported from the Commodore 64. The colors are not as vibrant and the music isn't as good, but the gameplay feels very nice. Yi-Yar Kung Fu is a title that helped usher in the fighting game genre. I always had a lot of fun with this title growing up, especially the Commodore 64 version. It's unfortunate that we haven't received an updated version in quite some time, but who knows what the future holds, especially now that Konami is revisiting their old IPs. Just remember, be like water and enjoy this happy little game. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below.
If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.